Yesterday I was talking about this chip, the MC34063A bug converter, and when we look at the data sheet, we can see that it can be used as a step down and a step up converter. In that earlier test, I tested it as a step down, but now I'm testing it as a step up converter and say all the it's all uh, according to the data sheet from Texas Instruments step up it means we send a, a, volt, a small voltage in and we get a higher voltage out of course uh, the physics laws are valid that does not mean that we get more power out and that uh, when I have time uh, will be explained. This is the schematic with some ins and outs. Of course I found that when you uh, connect a load to the step up converter the voltage will drop down. That's quite logical say uh, has to do of course with Ohm's law etc etc but the open voltages <coughs> are quite high that's my idea at least here are the open voltages so with no load when this switch is open we can go to 28 volts um, without a load and 45 volts without a load and with a load of 1 kilo ohm that is 1000 ohms we also have say a substantial um, higher output voltage anyway so here the open voltages and I got a very uh, interesting comment and I will uh, give more attention to that in the text box the relation between R1 and R2 is very important uh, it's also in the data sheet by the way but it sets uh, how it sets the output voltage the relation between these two resistors and I will demonstrate it now it is 2k2 and of course this it is an oscillator so this inductor and this capacitor set the frequency where it works I cannot exactly define where it works at the moment I think the output is too low or there are too many peaks on the output that's also an issue with this chip is it now on 1.2 me megahertz I really don't know anyway in fact it's not a big problem in my ID because such a chip uh, can be used for say sensitive uh, radio or audio circuits but in that case you surely need that filter I've talked about that in the earlier video so here the circuit on the breadboard this, these are all the minus connections and um, let me at first show the open voltage open voltage uh, so no um, resistor here this is the load it's a 1k resistor now I ha we have the open voltages you can see that the capacitor slowly is charged and we are now on say 4 41 volts with an input voltage of say 2.5 volts let me go to 3 volts uh, there, there is a stabilizer inside this chip it means that when we change the input voltage uh, it could be that the output voltage um, stays more or less the same well that's not completely true let me go to 5 volts I don't go higher I have already burned one chip out so now it's 6 volts here output voltage is 40 volts and we see and that has everything to do 
perhaps with the way that I made the circuit in a haywire mode, everything open, so stray capacitance, etc., that the circuit gets unstable. And of course, the data sheet from Texas Instruments tells you uh, that you must make it in a certain way to prevent stray capacitances. And that has everything to do with the fact that there is an oscillator used to get that higher voltage. Is this really 4.5 megahertz? I don't know. Anyway, so that's the first thing to tell. Open voltage. And I also have to tell that I've used here now not the, a 2K2 resistor in this first experiment that I showed, but I've bridged this one with a resistor of 1 kilo ohm. That's here. So now I remove it, that resistor. It means that the ratio between these two resistors changes and we have another output voltage. And you can find that back in the data sheet. And thanks for um, one of my followers that attended me on this um, on this point. Now we are on 28.4 volts without a load. So let's give it a load. Yes, here. And it drops to 20.7 volts. Well, that's in a certain way logical. I think I don't measure it because I don't want to pay too much attention to this test. I don't measure it, but perhaps here, is, here there is one milliampere flowing or so. Of course, you can calculate that with Ohm's law, etc. etc. Uh, we now have, say, an input voltage of 6 volts here, output voltage of 19.6 volts, and a certain current that is flowing when we use here that 2K2 resistor and that 47K resistor. In fact, that's more or less everything to tell about this DC-DC uh, stepping up converter. And when you look in the data sheet, you surely see that you can um, use an extra transistor to get more current out. So, in fact, that chip is only used as a driver to drive uh, a power transistor. That's surely in the, uh, the data sheet and the schematics of Texas Instruments. Well, what's more to tell? Uh, now the circuit is without that 1K resistor, so we have 19 volts out. There is a load. And in the following part of this video, I will show it without any load. That is, of course, in a certain way not real, because, say, the electronic circuit connected to the output here always is a, has a load. There's always, say, a curt, certain current must be flowing to that electronic circuit, but anyway. Open it again. Voltage of course gets much higher, 28 volts. And I also see my power supply, sorry, the input voltage change a little bit, so it's also a little bit related to the output level. But let's go to 3 volts. That is of course interesting. There are circuits that work on 3 volts. So here, 3 volts now. Let's look at the output voltage. That is 28.3 volts without load, anyway. That is interesting for certain electronic circuits that need almost no current, say in the order of 500 microampere, uh, that is 0.5 milliampere or so. Let's give it a load, that 1K resistor again. Input is now 3 volts, and you surely see that with a certain load the voltage drops down. 3 volt in, 7.5 volts out. Oh, you also see here, not 3 volt in, 1.2 volt in. 
1.2 volt in here and 7.4 volt out with a load of 1 kilo ohm. Let's go to 3 volt with that load of 1 kilo ohm. Oh, too far. 3, three volts in. Output voltage 15.5 volts. That is could be very interesting for certain electronic circuits with that 1 kilo ohm load. Say, small amplifier or so, but I have to say um, it works all very, very nice. But one of the problems that you can encounter, will encounter, that when you want to use such a DC up converter or DC down converter, uh, that is the that the output voltage is not pure because it's an oscillator. There are all kinds of resonances, and they are showed here. So this is one of the resonances, and they happen here during during a certain time. Here there are all, there are peak resonances where you have a radio circuit and want to use it this chip for a radio circuit, you must be absolutely sure that all these peaks are removed in some or another way. With that filter that Texas Instruments has published or in another way. I don't want to elaborate too much on that because these are peaks that are very difficult to be removed. So for an audio or a uh, sensitive shortwave radio it's much better to use, at least as hobbyists, a completely classical um, uh, power supply. And again, does this really oscillate on 1.6 MHz? I don't know. It flickers too much, it changes too much anyway. And another issue was that when I lift up the voltage too high, it doesn't give peaks, but there is another oscillation. And that could have to do, like I told, again, with the way I made it in this pure, pure test circuit. The Texas Instruments data sheets give you instructions about to, how to make it in the best stable way. Thanks for watching. This was all. Wish you luck. Pen over somewhat, finally.